Beautiful 97, WRSA, Decatur, Huntsville. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... for war or peace, he would consult soothsayers who would sacrifice oxen or sheep and then examine the entrails which would indicate the shape of things to come. When a modern president wants to determine what lies in store, he consults the economists and they examine the indicators. Soothsayers, economists, entrails, indicators. Only the names have changed over the centuries. As for accuracy, reliability, they remain about the same. There's a legend. Yes. In the desert, there's a shrine to the spirit of love. That sounds good. And if you pray to this spirit, your loved one will come to you. Can that be verified scientifically? Yes. Well, by whom? Well, by the people who tried it. Name one. Me. <laughs> Mystery drama, Desert Maiden, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Lock the door. Gotcha. A message from the Crime Prevention Coalition and the Ad Council. for today is Mr. Lester Larson, known as Sonny. At 42, Sonny is still brash and boyish. He doesn't weigh a single ounce more than he did when he was a lithe and graceful All-America wide receiver. His hair is as blonde as ever, and if here and there one may discern the suggestion of a wrinkle, it is lost almost immediately in the smile that is always hovering on his lips. Yes. He is still the golden boy after all these years. And, as you are about to witness, still as quick as ever on his feet. Come in. Sonny. Oh, so kind of you to stop by. Uh, Mr. Tolliver, our own Sonny Larson. Sonny, Mr. Elwood Tolliver. How do you do, sir? Yes, hello. Uh, Mr. Tolliver is the owner of Ravish, the 11th most popular perfume in the country. Uh, nine. Well, who hasn't heard of Ravish? Originally, I wanted to call it a salt. What a charming idea. No, I'm a chemist. I get down to essentials. Oh, we believe in essentials around here ourselves, don't we, Sonny? Devoutly. What's a perfume, anyhow? It's a gas. And why do women use it? To assault the erotic sensibilities of their prey. I was talked out of it. Oh? By my wife and daughter. I still think it's a sensational name. A sensational name? Oh, yes. They insisted I had to soften it. What could I do? Man has to have peace in the house. So I said we'll call it Ravish. So what do you say to that, Sonny? A compromise worthy of a King Solomon. Uh, Sonny, uh, Mr. Tolliver is here to enlist the aid of our advertising agency. No, I shouldn't be in this business. I should be creating formulae that will change the history of the world. And what am I doing? Making perfume. Cleopatra's perfume changed the history of the world, Mr. Tolliver. Yes, sir for an advertising campaign, Mr. Tolliver. No, not this new one. It's already got a name. Desert Maiden. Well, oh, Cleopatra came from a desert country. Well, this is the American desert. The American desert. I've got a son-in-law. Uh, need I say more? I gave him an office, a salary, the secretary. Why couldn't he enjoy all three of them and keep out of my way? No, no, he has to sit there and come up with ideas. The latest one is this. Desert Maiden. Desert Maiden. Uh, what do you think, Sonny? The desert? Uh, hot. Uh, dry. Thirsty. Uh, pretty cactus. Poisonous snake. Uh, maiden? Maiden lady. 
No, 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 no. Never get it off the ground. Oh, uh, it won't fly. Oh, well, I think it's a pretty good name. And so do I. It's funny. It's magnificent. A fantastic. Market. A memorable. I have to admit, I wish I thought of it myself. Well, maybe you did. Yeah, one day you might have just casually mentioned that it would be great to have a person with an American angle. And what could be more American than the desert and the Indians and so forth? And your son-in-law just... Picked up the ball and he ran with it. I would say that's exactly what happened. Yes, sir, that's what I want a 100% American perfume. What do you think, Sonny? Filled with the fragrant breezes of American freedom. There you are, Mr. Tolliver. Tell you what else you've got to put into a perfume. Mr. Oh, you took the very words out of my mouth, Sonny. And filled with the inscrutable mystery of the silent American desert. I don't like that word. Inscrutable. No good, no good, no good. How about ineluctable? How about a legend? Of course, a legend. I was about to suggest that very thing. A legend, let us say, of this desert maiden. I like it already. And how she found... And uh, what did she find, uh, Sonny? She found eternal love through the secrets told to her by this medicine man. The secrets of ancient gods who died long ago, but their wisdom lives on forever. Yes, sir, that's the legend. What's the legend? What are the specifics of the legend? Well, that is precisely why I asked Sonny in here. Sonny has been researching the great American Southwest. Yes, he fell in love with it when he went to college there. Right, Sonny. My heart has never left it. Uh, uh, Sonny, just the other day, we, we were talking about this legend of the desert Indians, weren't we? Do you remember? Oh, yes, 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 I remember. You said there was that beautiful love legend? You mean there is a legend? Oh, certainly, Mr. Tolliver. Uh, how does it go again, Sonny? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Miss Bagwater, as she fly a hot to who you are, return my call. Oh, oh okay. well, I suppose we'll have to wait for him to come back. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, well, see, the chief is away on, I suppose we would call it a retreat. He's in the wilderness communing with the spirits, and he is the one who is going to tell me the legend. Oh, that's too bad. When did he do to return? Well, if the spirits don't decide to have him for supper, <laughs> in about a week or ten days. Well, we can wait a week, can't we, Mr. Tolliver? Especially for an authentic ancient legend. Well, time is money. But the legend's been around for a thousand years. What's another few days? I think it's pretty good. I just can't believe it's real. Well, how can you believe it's real when you know that it came right out of my hand? Yes, but a, a thing like this, even though you know it isn't real, you, you should want to believe it's real. Just, just picture it, Bernice. This dark, shadowy, demon-filled desert. And there in the secret grove is a shrine. Every maiden who wants her true love to come to her must make her way to this enchanted place wherein dwells the spirit of love. If she finds favor in the eyes of the spirit, he anoints her with the essence of this perfume. What? Mm, it's a good beginning, but... Uh, but what? You're not all the way there. Maybe you need some help. Some help? Well, I get this feeling that you missed a turning point somewhere that could... Tell me where. We've hired this very bright young guy. No, He's it. very quick, Sonny. Building him up to take my job, Bernice. Sonny, you and I, we work so well together. I, I notice, I notice you put that in the past tense. Look, one man can't do everything. Tell me more. And you're stretching yourself too thin. You, you're trying to soften the blow? This particular thing about a legend... Maybe it just isn't your cup of tea. I see. I'm slipping. I'm losing it. I'm going stale. Did I say that? In your own roundabout way, yes. You're stuck on this thing, Sonny. I'm not. You're too valuable to let yourself get derailed on this one. I started this job, and I'm going to finish it. I'll bring Joe Stevens in to help you. Bernice, this is my job. It's the agency's job, and we're a team. Got a problem with you. Well, there's a problem with me now. The days of the lone wolf. Uh, over. Well, this lone wolf bagged some pretty big game for this company. But we're not a company anymore. I know, I know. We're a corporation. We're a conglomerate. The people who own us don't know or even care what we do. They're in the lumber business. All they want is that bottom line. Your volume falls below last year. You're out. But that's why we can't afford to lose, Ravish. Who says we're going to lose them? He's getting restless. And you're starting to run scared. 
Then you should match me stride for stride. I know what's wrong with the legend. Yes? I've been faking it. But it has to be a fake. You're making it up, aren't you? It has to be an authentic fake. A what? You see, it has to have the feel and the aura of the desert. Bernice, let me go out there. Let me breathe the air. Let me drink it all in. Sonny, you're talking to me now, not the client. If I can sell you, I can sell him. Uh, how, how long can you hold him off? Well, he's getting nervous. How long? Oh, uh, a day, two days. Give me a week. You want to fill her up and check under the hood, the tires? Sure, Good. Thing. Good. Hey, you got anything to drink? It's cool inside. You got beer and pop. Boy. Is it always this hot out here? Yeah, I'm cold wave. Uh -huh. Am I on the reservation yet? Mm -hmm, just about. Is there a phone inside? Yeah, on the wall. Thanks. Bernice, uh, you can leave a message for me at this number. Where are you? A filling station and a souvenir shop. Where are you going to stay? In the desert. Where in the desert? A hotel. No hotel. I'm going to drive around in my car. <laughs> you? Listen, I've got a sleeping bag. I have everything I need. But, Sonny, why? I told you why. I want to get the essence of the desert. Are you making progress? Progress. I just got here. Well, the client is getting edgy. Bernice, this is the only way to do it. Oh, yeah? mystery of the desert. It's a... It's a thing you can feel. Mm, sure. Bernice, have you put Joe Stevens on it? Why would I put Joe Stevens on it? Look, let me have this thing, please. And if I blow it, okay, call in whoever you like. Just give me the next few days, huh? Funny, what has come over you? I don't know, but just let me have the next few days, okay? <sighs> sure. Great. Now I have to get to work. Goodbye. It's nice. Fifteen gallons. Everything else okay? Yeah, right. Here you go. Thank you. See, you plan to do some camping. That's right. You one of them uh, archaeologists? No, no, no. Just, uh, just wandering around. If you say so. Quite a place you got here. Authentic Indian artifacts. Uh, this this one here, this is quite a little piece, this totem pole. It's on sale. Yeah. Oh, see what it says on the bottom. Made in... Yeah. They're all made in Japan or in the Orient someplace. But your sign says authentic Indian. Well, where do you think the Indians come from originally? The Orient. How do you think they got here? They all crossed over from Asia. I wonder... Uh, you looking... For something in particular? Yes, yes, I am. What? No, nah, you wouldn't have it. I could order it. Be here tomorrow morning. I don't think so. Well, what is it? Well, it's a legend. A legend, huh? What kind of legend do you want? What kind have you got? What kind do you need? A legend about love. Love, huh? Any particular kind of love? Well... Love in the desert. Any particular type of love? Happy love? Sad love? Well... He loves her, she don't love him, or vice versa. Uh, more or less the kind of love that will make most people feel good. Well, maybe I can help you out. You mean you have all these legends just lying around? Me? I don't know the first thing about it. But my sister... Hey, Ruth, can you come out here for a minute? Your sister? She knows all this kind of stuff. What is it, Mort? Uh, Ruth, uh, this gentleman here is interested in some engine legends. Oh. Hello, Sonny. Hello, Sonny. Here you are in the middle of the desert, thousands of miles from home, and in a place you've never seen before. And a lady whose brother owns a gas station and souvenir shop calls you by your nickname. So now we must discover who is Ruth. We have the entire second act in which to explore that question, and it shall arrive here shortly. And 
I know her not? Is she from a time I have long forgot? Where indeed have I seen that face? And why do I not recall the place? Perhaps it was in a dream that we met. One I don't remember. One she can't forget. The poet perfectly expresses the quandary of Lester Larson, better known as Sonny. Who is this woman, Ruth? Hello, Sonny. Do you know me? Of course. Have you been, Sonny? Well, uh... Of course you don't remember me. Ruth? <laughs> well, why should you? Well, I, 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 I think you, you do look vaguely familiar. Vaguely familiar? Yeah. That's the story of my life. Well, where, when, how, how did you know me? We went out on a date. We did? Yeah, it was a dinner date. Oh. I won you. In a raffle. Oh, what? You were the grand prize. Raffle. It was without a doubt the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Now, 20 years later, you don't even remember. 20 years ago? That'd be at school. Mm, Western Ag and Tech. You were the biggest man on campus. All-American football, handsome, <laughs> intelligent. Now, come on. Now, wait. I'm not finished. Don't you remember? The student organization was having a fundraiser, and they sold raffle tickets, and you were the grand prize. Oh. Dinner date with Sonny Lawrence. That's right. There was a rock. I won. Me. <laughs> a very shy little Indian girl. Now I remember. Ruth. And I bet you don't. As a matter of fact, it was a very enjoyable evening. Well, thank you. But, you know, you were bored, Steph. That isn't true. I know I was scared, Steph. Why? It was really the first date I ever had in my life. You were very nice. You picked me up at the dorm. Well, that in itself must have been a new experience for you. Why? Well, the girls you went out with lived in the sorority houses. Yeah, that's right. You had this huge chauffeured limousine. And we had dinner at Baxter's. You see, I do remember. You gave me a corsage. White orchids. A pink. You want to hear a secret? I'm just a little bit colorblind. And... You wanted to order steak, but I convinced you to try the lobster. It was the very first time. <laughs> and I had champagne for the very first time. You know, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that day. And as I recall it now, I did most of the talking. Uh, all of it. I, I, I was just so oh, terribly shy. Yeah, but you were a fantastic listener. Who was I? Oh, yeah. You were the only girl I went out with who really listened to me. Oh, that can't be true. Oh, uh, they pretended to listen. That's because they weren't interested in me. Well, how can you say that? They were only interested in sharing the spotlight with a football hero. But you were interested in me. You were really listening to what I was saying. I had a great time. And I wondered... Yes? Yeah. Never mind. So long ago, far away. Well, I wondered if I should ask you for another date. You did? Oh, yeah. But I guess... <laughs> I almost felt that you wanted to, and then, then I said to myself, oh, oh, come on, you. Why would why would he want to go out with you? It would have been awkward. Because I was an Indian. Perhaps. But that was only part of it. Mm, the largest part of it. No. It was just that we came from such completely different worlds. We had no friends in common, and... Uh, what I'm trying to say is... I wasn't mature enough to know how to handle it. Would you have gone out with me? Well, I don't know. Your world and your friends would have been just as strange to me. I I wouldn't have been mature enough to handle it either. Well, what have you been doing since school? Oh, I've been out in the world. I, I have my Ph.D. in education, and I'm back here to write a book. On what? On growing older. Hey. <laughs> You didn't grow older, Sonny. Oh, come on. Of course I did. I'm 41. And you still look 21. I look at you and I can see the world hasn't really touched you, has it? No, I'm still carrying a ball. And thanks to some fancy footwork, I haven't been tackled yet. I understand you're interested in, uh, in, in some Indian legends. Yeah. See, I'm an advertiser. I know. I followed your progress in the alumni bulletin. Well, our client has a perfume and he calls it Desert Maiden. Yes. Yeah. It would be nice if we could find some authentic Indian love legend to tie in with that. Well, there's one that's 
quite well known. Well known? At least in our tribe. Is it a secret? I couldn't tell it to you if it were. No, I suppose not. It's a really lovely legend. Now, picture the desert at night. The dark, shadowy, demon-filled desert. Hidden away is a secret grove in which is a shrine. Wait a minute. Yes? Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Go on. And a maiden who wants to make her true love come to her travels to this enchanted place wherein there dwells the spirit of love. If she finds favor in the eyes of the spirit, he will anoint her with the essence, the irresistible essence of love. What have you just said? I, I'm only telling you what, what I, I... Yes? No, 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 nothing, nothing. It's slighted. It's true? True. I don't think so. Why do you say that? Well, because it doesn't work. Oh. Many years ago, uh, I went out there and I found the grove and the shrine. I prayed to the spirit of love. But you see, the one I loved, huh, he never came to me. Oh. You're saying that you're familiar with this legend. Yes. Where did you hear it? I don't know. Well, I, not many people outside our tribe would be aware of it. But there is such a place. Oh, yes. Where? Where is it? Where? It's, it's not taboo or anything like that. Oh, no. It's just a clump of scraggly trees and a few rocks. Could I go there? I don't know how. You could find it. Look, you suppose you could show me where it is? I, I know I'm imposing. Oh, but... well, yes. That, that might be fun. When would it be convenient? Well, how about tonight? I remember the last time we were in an automobile. We were on our way to Baxter's. Oh, whatever happened to Baxter's? They're still there. Do you ever go back to the school? Listen, I'm usually guest of honor at the homecoming game. Ah, oh, you enjoyed college, didn't you? I had the time of my life. And you? Well, I managed to survive it. My date with you was one of the greatest experiences of my scholastic well, career. <laughs> how, uh, how much further is it? Oh, I, I think we're here now. Well, yes, yes, this is it. The sacred place. According to the legend. Well, uh, what happens now? What happens? I mean, do the spirits manifest themselves? Uh, yes, I I would suppose so if... If what? If you believe in them. Uh-huh. Do you believe in them? Oh, yes. Why? You never know why. It's just that you somehow receive the spirit, and you know they're inside you. And that's all there is to it. But you said that the legend isn't true. For me, it wasn't true. You prayed to the spirits, but your prayer wasn't answered. That doesn't prove that the spirits do not exist. It only means that they have refused to answer your prayer. Do you... Excuse me. What is it? I interrupted you. No, you didn't. You, you, you were just praying, weren't you? Yes. I thought that you would be praying, too. Me? Pray for what? Well, whatever it is you want most. Right now. What I want most? Yes. What is the most important favor you can ask of the Spirit? The truth? At a time like this, <laughs> only the truth. All right. This client of mine and my boss, Bernie. Yes? I want to find a way to phrase this legend so that they'll buy it. And right now, that's the most important thing in the entire world. Yep, I'd have to say it is. I need it. You understand? Yes. Then you must pray for it. I don't know how to pray. Look all around you. Isn't this an enchanted place? Just some scrubby bushes in the middle of the desert. What's enchanted about it? Well, the enchantment is in your own mind. What? Well, look. See how softly the moonlight beams down upon the shrine? The shrine? The rocks. See how they're arranged in the shape of a heart? Yeah. And now, do you hear music? Music? Someone is talking to you. I, I don't hear any music. Listen, Sonny. Listen. Sonny. 
Sonny, Sonny. What? Tommy. Tommy, where are you going here? I just came over to tell you you'd better hustle over to practice. Practice? It's because you need football practice. Oh. You're going to be late. Coach will start lecturing you about getting a swell head again. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. What are you thinking about, Sonny? <sighs> Girl, do I know her? The one I went out with last week, she won the raffle. Oh? What's there to think about? Oh, she's a very interesting girl. Nothing much to look at. She, she's pretty in a sort of quiet way. She's kind of, kind of interesting. Listen, Sonny, I can tell you it don't pay to get involved with that kind of situation. Who's talking about getting involved? I was just thinking if I should ask her out a couple of times. That's getting involved. <sighs> what am I going to do? About what? About that girl. Well, you don't have to do anything about it. But I do, I do. Oh, because I'm in love with her. What did you say? You heard me. I'm in love with her. And we heard him, too. He's in love with her. To some people, this could make eminently logical sense. After all, they will tell you that opposites attract. Well... If they do tell you that, they're telling you something that is not borne out by the facts. It may be a romantic notion, but the reverse is true. In most cases, we choose mates who are pretty much like ourselves, don't we? We tend to marry those who share our own background and our own basic attitudes towards life. The third act will be here shortly. football hero. He was blonde and blue-eyed and unbelievably handsome. She was a shy, quiet girl from an Indian reservation. She had practically no money, no smart clothes, and was as much of a stranger in his world as she was in hers. And yet, they met and fell in love, but nothing came of it. And while we meet again, 20 years later... I'm in love with her. You can't be. Who says I can't be? It doesn't make sense. Who says love has to make sense? Well, sure. Why? Why not? Uh, Sonny, listen to an older guy. Sure, it's possible for anyone in the world to fall in love with any girl, but why not be smart? Smart? Fall in love with the right one. I just met the right one. What do you know about her? What do I have to know? Sonny... You're sitting on top of the world. Just as easy to fall in love with a rich girl as a poor one. Come on, what's money? What's money? See? Or really you're talking like a rich man. You forget who you were, what you were four years ago before all this happened to you. Hey, we're going to be late for practice. No, 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 no. This is more important. You can't be a football hero forever. Even tomorrow, a broken bone, a pinched nerve, and all over. And you go back to... Look, I don't want to hear about it. Home and the steel mill. Why don't you mind your own business? What about Margie Lewis? Ma I'm not in love with Margie Lewis. You should be. You're crazy. Father is a millionaire, and she goes for you. There it is. Love, money, connections, all tied up in a beautiful package. What does this other one have to offer? I'm not in love with Margie Lewis. I'm not in love with Margie Lewis. I'm not... I'm not, I'm, I'm, Honey. I'm not in love with... Honey. I'm not, I'm, what, I'm, what, 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 what? What, what, what is that you're saying? What was that, what was it, what was it? Oh, not nothing. This is the place of the spirit, Sonny. Yeah, I guess it is. The place of that legend you're looking for. But you say that the legend isn't true. And it wasn't true for me, so far. So far? I, I, I always wanted to come back. Well, for? To ask again? How can you believe? I believe more strongly than ever. In spite of the fact that you got a Ph.D.? <laughs> Maybe because of that fact. You ever prayed for what you wanted? No, not until tonight. Why not? Because it all came to me so easily. I never had to work for it. Never. 
My father, my brothers, they worked in the mills. Me, I knew how to catch a football and run with it. How I could do that, remember? Oh, I remember. And just because I could do that, everything came to me. Money, college, women threw themselves at me. I know. But it wasn't right. Why? I don't know. It's just that deep down inside me, something kept saying this isn't right. You don't get anything for nothing. You have to give something. Something? Something of value. And I gave her nothing. Who? I gave her nothing. Tony, what are you saying? I don't know what I'm saying. This place has got me spooked out. Let's get away from here. Of course. No, no, no. I, I, I don't want to go. Not just yet. I... Tony? What do you want, Margie? What did you expect? Who... Who is Margie? I want a divorce. A divorce? Why do you want a divorce, lover boy? That's why, because I'm not lover boy. Oh, come get little Margie, a great big kid. You're not little Margie anymore, either. Come on. You feel better? I said I want a divorce. You know what, honey? I'll ask Daddy to give you a raise. I don't work for Daddy anymore. What are you saying? I quit. Oh, you should have long ago. He puts you too hard. I didn't do any work at all. He's a slave driver. He should have been a Simon Legree on a plantation. Margie, will you listen? Or else on one of those galleys? Margie, it's all over. What's all over, lover boy? Our marriage. Everything. Uh, all right. Get it out of your system. It seems we have a scene like this once a month. You're going to quit. You want a divorce. Okay, you said it. So that should hold you for the next 30 days. Now let's get dressed and go out to dinner. But this time I did quit. I don't believe it. Why not? Well, where could you go? What could you do? I took a job with an advertising agency. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. I'm not some dumb jock. I was an arts major. Sonny, you can't leave me. Why not? Because... Because. Because I'm bought and paid for... Poor Margie. Daddy bought you everything you ever thought you wanted, even the campus hero. Sonny, I love you. You don't love me. You only wanted to share the spotlight with the All-America star. Well, that light is getting dimmer. It's starting to go out. Soon we'll both be in the dark. And then what'll we do? What's left for me except to become a boring old drunk? Sonny! I don't want to keep living a lie anymore. Not anymore, Margie. Not anymore, Margie. Sonny. Not anymore. Sonny, are you all right? No. No, but I only went from one lie to another. What are you saying? An even bigger lie. It was so easy. What was so easy? I was so successful, Ruth. So successful. I know, I know. But you see, it was just a lie, a lie. Glad to have you aboard, Sonny. I know. I've got a lot to learn, Bernice. Oh, you know most of it now. I mean, about, about this advertising business. Sonny, you know why I hired you? Well, I... Because of your smile. And those great eyes of yours. Those real deep blue eyes. Oh. Sonny, you can sell the greatest product in the world. You know what it is? Reassurance. That smile, those eyes of yours, they reassure the client. They convince him he's dealing with a man who has his best interest at heart. A man who knows what he's doing. I'm back where I started. What do you mean? I was able to go to college because of my hands and my feet. Oh, you had great hands and feet. Sonny. And now I've got a job because of my eyes and my smile. Doesn't anybody ever want me for my brain? Sonny, how many times has a girl said to you, all you're interested in is my body? And haven't you always said to her, no, honey, you have a wonderful mind and a great personality. And what was the important thing? What are my duties here, Bertie's? <laughs> Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Sure, keep smiling. But as you get older, it becomes harder to smile. What are you saying, Sonny? And your eyes, they have to lose some of that sparkle because you're getting older. You're getting older. Maybe you're thinking of more serious things. You're thinking ahead and you're looking back. At what? At what you don't have, what you didn't make of yourself. It's no good to look back and you're afraid of what's up front. It's so... You keep smiling. You hope the sparkle is still in your eyes. But she's too smart for you. Who? Bernice. Who's Bernice? Bernice. She sees through it. She always knows when the light is going out, when the well is running dry. She always knows and she's always ready. And one day you're sitting there in your office and there's a knock on the door and you say, come in. And he's there. He has arrived. Who? Who? Joe. 
Joe Stevens. Joe Stevens. Any Joe Stevens who waits in the wings for all of us. My Joe Stevens is short. I'm tall. There's something tight and closed about him. Me, I'm free and easy and open. You can't even see his eyes because his glasses must be at least one inch thick. But we could be twins. Twins. We both can give the same thing, see? Reassurance. And he's got one thing I don't have. Youth. You're still young, Sonny. Forty years and twenty-five. You look at him and suddenly that famous saying is staring you in the face. This too shall pass. You realize that you are the this and you are passing. You know that here is the successor waiting. Just waiting. How do you know? Because 15 years ago, I succeeded some way. I, too, was a successor. And so, you run to see the coach. Bernice. Bernice. What is it, Sonny? Who is this kid, this Joe Stevens? Oh, he's a bright boy. He can learn a great deal from you. Is that so? Oh, we have to keep picking up good talents. You know that. Sure thing. Now, look, Sonny. All your life, you've been the star. But the coach always has had a substitute sitting on the bench who could go in, in case... In case of what? In case you were hurt. Or in case I should lose it. Sonny, you're my number one. For now. But isn't that all there is to the world? Now? Well, have you soaked up enough atmosphere, Lester? Lester? Well, that's your name, isn't it? Holy, I'd forgotten. <laughs> I haven't been called Lester in years. You haven't? No, oh, why did you suddenly call me Lester? I, I don't know. Yes, yes, I do. It occurs to me that it's downright silly to call a grown man Sonny. You may be right. Why did you call me Sonny back at school? Because everybody else did. And when you saw me this afternoon, you called me Sonny. Why? Because you still looked like the golden boy. Well, then why did you just call me Lester? Because I'm not sure. Is it because maybe I don't look like a boy anymore? <laughs> maybe. <sighs> we should be going back. Then you have had enough of this place. No. Not enough, but as much as I can take at one time. Hey, you had a telephone call. Some lady in New York. Her name's uh, Bernice. Is that so? Says you're to call her immediately. Okay. You must be starved, Lester. Now that you mention it. Why don't I make you some dinner? I won't be long. Well, don't you want to call this here Bernice? Sure. She said it was real important. You should never make a real important phone call on an empty stomach. Sonny, finally. How's the legend coming? The legend? Oh, forget it. We're on a whole new tack. Oh? Yep, throw out the all-American angle. Just like that? Well, the client was thinking of something else you said. What? What was it I said? About how Cleopatra's perfume changed the history of the world. Oh, that? Yes, that. Now, he wants a whole yeah, new... I... <laughs> I don't even know if it's true. Yes, Sonny, don't interrupt. He's hot as a furnace. He wants to change the name Desert Maiden to Cleopatra's perfume. Now, quick, Sonny, a slogan. What's the matter? Joe Stevens couldn't come up with one? No, Sonny. The client is clamoring at the gates. Save my life and your own. Oh, no. Not mine. Just yours. Funny. All right, Bernice, for old times' sake. Let me see. Cleopatra's perfume. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cleopatra's perfume. It changed the history of the world. Now let it change the story of your life. Oh, Sonny, I'll never doubt you again. Yeah, till next week. Can you be back by tomorrow morning? Nope. Well, when? I don't know. How long do you want to stay there? Till I get a little bit older. What does that mean, Sonny? And call me Lester. <laughs> Listen, Ruth, is there a movie or a show or a place where we can go around here? What do you mean? I'm asking you for a date. After all, it's been 20 years since our last one. 
Will I have to wait another 20 years for our next one? Lester? Not if you call me Lester. How does the story end? You know perfectly well that they did nicely together. And for all I know, they're even married by now. Love, it takes its own sweet time. And it runs its own mysterious course. It's not how it begins, but how it ends. My visit with you isn't ended yet. I shall return shortly. As the philosopher said, it's better to be rich and handsome than it is to be poor and ugly. From this, we should assume that the rich and the handsome sail through life without a care in the world. They, too, have their problems. They, too, are aware of their mortality. They, too, are alone with their thoughts. So, if you're that proverbial 120-pound bespectacled weakling, don't envy that Adonis of a football star. Unbelievably, there are times when he actually thinks you've got a better deal in life than he had. Our cast included Mason Adams, Pat Elliott, Robert Dryden, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. How many German divisions are stationed to get to today? Hmm? Okay. Hmm. July 26th. Eight divisions. Uh, well, by tomorrow morning, three more divisions will be crossing the Brenner Pass. Uh, the Tauris and the St. Bernard, uh, Operation Alaric. The purpose of those troops is to disarm the Italian forces. We'll turn their soldiers into factory workers and their factories to plants with the Reich. And who else has been informed of the planned rescue of Mussolini? Well, no one. Only you and I know of its mission. As a fear, I stress that. We have been aware of Italy's collapse for five months, but so. Hmm? What can I do to help? I uh, have the airfield surrounded. Within 48 hours, 10,000 paratroopers will be landing. I have trucks ready to take them away. Even in the highest places in Berlin, it is a secret that we are about to kidnap Mussolini. This is Tommy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams.